What is up, world-class athlete? In today's video, you're gonna learn how to hit Federer's forehand in three steps. By mastering these three steps of the unit turn, the backswing, and the uh, acceleration, you're finally gonna be able to hit your forehand with power and consistency. To really find out how to get that fluid, effortless, whip-like action and effortless contact on your forehand and finally transform it into a dominant, massive, confident weapon. Without further ado, let's jump right into the unit turn. The first step for you to be able to hit Federer's forehand is the unit turn. As Federer executes his split step, he's gonna rotate his entire body until his shoulders are approximately 90 degrees or perpendicular to the net. The reason why this initial unit turn is so important is because the majority of power on the forehand needs to be generated from uh, the bigger muscles of the body. And by executing this 90 degree turn, that's gonna allow you to get that big power from those larger muscles. A common mistake here is that a lot of players will take their racket back with just their arm or they'll take their racket back too far. And the specific step-by-step -step instruction that you can follow to really make sure you're doing your unit turn just like Federer is step number one, like I said, rotate your body until you're about perpendicular with the net just like that. The second step is that you wanna have your elbow at about a 90 degree angle with your hand slightly above your elbow. The reason why you wanna have the hand above the elbow is this allows you to generate more of a downward loop as you go into our second step. The last phase, or the last uh, piece, is that you wanna take your racket back approximately to three o'clock. If you're with six, the end of your unit turn should finish with two hands on the racket at about three o'clock. Or in other words, you wanna have the racket lined up with the middle of your chest, just like that. Okay, so now you've mastered the unit turn. Let's jump into the backswing. So you've now perfectly executed your unit turn. From there, what Federer is gonna do is he's gonna perform his backswing. This is essentially where he just straightens his arm, finishing with the racket above the hand in a way at about 5.30. Here would be three, here would be six, here would be 5.30. Now, the really common mistakes here are that at the end of the backswing, players will open their racket and take it too far back. This is gonna create a lot of tension in the arm during the forward swing, whereas what we're gonna see Federer do as he executes his backswing is with a lot of fluidity, set the racket down just like that. Setting the racket down, uh, driving the legs, rotating the body and pulling that arm forward. So for you to specifically hit that perfect checkpoint every time, I've broken it down into two anatomical motions. After you complete the unit turn, you wanna slightly horizontally abduct the shoulder and perform elbow extension. So you combine those two anatomical motions and you're gonna get that perfect unit turn position just like that. A great drill and checkpoint that you can use to really make sure you're achieving these correct checkpoints. And by the way, take a look at one of my VIP students, Scott, forehand before and then after. Just by uh, fixing this backswing, he was able to now start generating way more power and consistency, as you'll learn in the last section of this video on acceleration. But for you to achieve the same results that he did, what you can do is actually close your eyes, perform your split, your unit turn and your backswing, then open your eyes and make sure you've achieved that correct configuration. The racket tip is above the hand, the arm is at about 5.30, and you're in a stretched and coiled stance, just like that. By achieving these configurations with your body, it's gonna allow you to start tapping into the big and effective muscles, creating the racket flip, as you're about to learn, and really getting that power and consistency. Lastly, let's close with the acceleration. So after achieving these two perfect steps of the unit turn and the backswing, we're now in the optimal biomechanical configurations to execute the Federer acceleration going forward into the shot, generating that power uh, and consistency, just like that. So how should you accelerate? What should it feel like? What muscles should you use to make sure you're playing just like Federer on the forehand? The key is once you achieve this configuration, the power is gonna start from the ground up. What you wanna do is initiate the stroke from a leg drive, 
a hip and torso rotation and pulling the arm forward just like that. What this is gonna do is it's gonna create a flip in the racket. Now, this shouldn't be like a conscious decision to put the racket there with your arm, but it's a natural consequence of what in biomechanics they call the motion dependent effects of the bigger muscles of the body. Specifically, the legs are gonna drive, the torso is gonna rotate, and the pec and the shoulder are gonna pull the arm forward. If you do all of this while maintaining a relaxed wrist, the racket is naturally gonna flip and you're gonna be able to generate uh, the power and the spin just like that. So what you really wanna uh, feel as you're accelerating is as you drive your legs and rotate, you wanna feel a slight degree of tension and stretch in these muscles. This is because, and a great analogy that I learned from legendary master coach Rick Macy, is you wanna think of your body like a car and the racket is the passenger. The body is the car and is driving forward. The racket is the passenger and comes along for the ride. My problem was I always used to like over tense my forehand and tighten up. But once I learned uh, this technique, now when I accelerate, I focus on generating the power from the big muscles of the body. Ugh! And it really transformed because now I'm very relaxed and consistent, but I'm able to tap into that maximum effortless power. Some other final notes that you want to look for is as you uh, pull the arm forward, the arm will travel initially away from the body and then as it goes forward, it will go forward internally rotating into contact just like that, following through either if you're hitting flatter in a follow through variation like this or for more spin, finishing like that. All right, champions, so now you have three steps to hitting the Federer forehand and you've got step-by-step -step checkpoints to follow along the way. I absolutely hope you love, love, love this video. I really enjoyed shooting it for you. In next week's video, we're gonna cover about how you can start generating way more spin